In 1802, Matthew Flinders, an English navigator and cartographer, documented a particularly unique species of emu on Kangaroo Island. Then again in 1802, on King Island, another unique species of emu was found and documented by Francois Perron, a French naturalist. Furthermore, emus were known to exist in Tasmania by Europeans since at least their first colonization in 1803. All of these populations on these islands were found to have differences from their mainland counterparts. For example, the King Island emu was 44% the size of the mainland emu, making it around 87 centimeters tall. As much as the people of the 19th century must have been very confused by this evolutionary distinguishment, we today know this as the island rule, or Foster's rule. It is a biological rule that animal populations that live on islands split off from the mainland will, depending on bigger or smaller resources, will start to change to fit their new environment, usually through size. A great example of this occurrence in nature are the cypress dwarf elephants. These elephants only grew up to around 1.4 meters, making them smaller than most grown humans. So let's go and see the fascinating differences between these isolated islanders and their mainland counterparts. First off, let's talk about the emus of Kangaroo Island. The Kangaroo Island emu was first discovered in 1802 and was quite common on Kangaroo Island. The island itself was 4,000 416 square kilometers in area. It formed because of sea rising levels and became an island around 10,000 years ago. Today it is around 15 kilometers away from mainland Australia. The original emu population would probably have a similar body size to modern day emus. Over time, because of limited resources, they shrank. We don't know their exact diet, although we can guess that it's omnivorous, like its mainland counterparts, feeding off seeds, fruits, flowers, and insects. They were the second biggest emu we're going to talk about in this video, and seem to have evolved around 10,000 years ago, around the same time the island split off from the mainland, during the Pleistocene period. In 1803, several skins of the animal were sent to France, two of which have survived until today. Tragically, by 1827, they had been purged from the island. It's unfortunate to see a species go extinct within only 25 years, and unfortunately, this wouldn't be the first time such a fate would happen for these unique emu species. King Island was separated from Tasmania around 14,000 years ago, not only forming a new island, but also forming a new environment for the species that reside on this landmass. Soon, Isla Dwarfism would take place, and the King Island Emu would evolve. The King Island Emu is documented far better than its larger counterparts. We know it had a lot of unique features, not only including its size, but also its darker plumage from the mainland emu. So let's take a look at this massively unique species of emu. Other differences from the mainland emu include its proportionally longer toe length. Furthermore, it had unique blue skin on its neck, as seen in many depictions. A 2011 genetic study did not find these genes commonly associated with melanism in the birds. According to accounts from Francois Perron, sorry if I butchered that name, there was sexual dimorphism within the species. According to him, males were much brighter in coloration and perhaps larger than their female counterparts. This all goes in contradiction with mainland emus, with the females being much larger and also known to turn brighter in mating seasons. It did, of course, have some similarities with emus of the mainland, with their offspring having a striped plumage as well as being fast runners, although not as fast as the mainland emu. Perron described how the birds were mostly solitary, 
only coming together to breed. He also wrote about their diet and the consumption of seaweed, grass, and berries. Even with these similarities, remarkably, these animals were 44% the size of the mainland emu, making them around 87 centimeters tall. One of the main reasons we know so much about this animal is the fact two alive individuals were transported to Paris in 1803. Unfortunately, within the next two years, the King Island emus went extinct on the island. It's a tragedy that within three years of being discovered, the whole of the King Island emu population had been killed. But they hadn't completely went extinct yet. The animals which were transported to Paris in 1803 died in 1822, officially ending the species. I'd like to end this segment on a good note. Although the King Island emus are long gone, elephant seals are coming back to King Island. In over 200 years, an elephant seal hasn't been born on the island until 2015. Finally, coming back. The Tasmanian emu is debated on whether it should be recognised as its own species, never mind subspecies. I've decided to feature it in this video anyway, although future research could devalidate the information said here. The Tasmanian emu lived on the island of Tasmania, the largest of the three islands I've spoken about. Just like with other islands, this one was formed because of rising sea levels around 11,700 years ago. The most unique thing which sets the Tasmanian emu apart from its mainland counterparts is its smaller size, although there is no solid evidence for this claim. The reason it didn't evolve to be a lot smaller was because it had a sizable population on the island, and as seen from maps of the island, it was big enough to support the species. Other differences include the white head the emu had and the black foreneck, although there weren't many other distinctions from the mainland emu. The Tasmanian emu was the last holdout of unique emu species, living up until 1865, until eventually it went extinct because of hunting, invasive species, and human elements. Hopefully at some point, emus will be reintroduced into Tasmania to rewild the ecosystems there. That's all three of the Tasmania, King Island, and Kangaroo Island emus. And that concludes our video. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope you've learned something new, and I hope that you can use this information in some way to help preserve emu species and maybe even reintroduce them to some of the islands in this video. I'd like to give a big shout out to Sol Uploads, who shouted me out, and then all of the sources, music, and footage, and of course images, which have been used in this video, should be featured in the description. Thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful rest of your year. Also, thank you to all of the people who have helped moderate the community Discord server, and everything else. You guys have been incredible, and I can't thank you enough.